from around the world and around the bend, Liberty Mutual Sports brings you highlights of the great sporting events of this and every season. Today, from the Liberty Mutual Driver Training Center in Hopkinton, Massachusetts, the final round of the fourth annual Tractor Trailer Skid Control Semifinals. Van Rhodes and Miles Trailer at Trackside with an update on all the week's action and the play-by-play -play commentary on today's exciting event. Let's go down to the track where Van Rhodes is standing by. Welcome. We're in the final day of what has been an exciting week of competition as we've seen the field of over 20 entrants narrowed to the two remaining drivers who we'll be watching today. Rolling Ralph Richards, a driver with over seven years behind the wheel and a man who's been a tough competitor ever since he joined the circuit. And gentleman Jim Johnson, who after eight years on the road is said to be among the best when it comes to controlling his rig. Joining me to bring you all the action today is a man I've had the pleasure of working with all week in covering this event, Miles Trailer. Thank you, Van, and what a week it's been, too. We've had drivers from all over the region out here putting these tractor trailers through some skids and maneuvers that you certainly wouldn't want to see out on the road. Now, if the two drivers here today continue to demonstrate the kind of skill they've exhibited all week, they'll both be advancing to the national finals next month. While the drivers are getting ready for today's event, let's talk about what we'll be seeing in the competition. All right, Van. Primarily, the drivers are being judged on control. That is how well they'll control their vehicle when faced with a skidding situation. Now, it's really more than just a sport we're talking about here when you consider that one out of every four road accidents involves a skidding vehicle where the driver has lost control. And as all the drivers in this competition know, a skidding vehicle can quickly lead to a jackknife. That's right. Now, if the tractor trailer becomes more than 15 degrees out of line, the skid has gone beyond the point of recovery and a jackknife is in the making. Well, that doesn't give the drivers much time to think about their control maneuvers. They have to understand exactly what's happening during the skid so they can react quickly. Some of the drivers took time out from the competition earlier in the week to help us demonstrate what's involved. Let's take a look at it. Well, first of all, Van, the drivers must know that a skid is brought on when the tires lose their bond with the road surface and enter what is known as sliding traction. Now, the only way to bring a skidding vehicle back under control is to regain rolling traction. So the first thing these drivers try to do in all skids is regain rolling traction. Now, without it, they just won't be able to control the direction of travel. Another control maneuver which comes into play is a technique called counter-steering. Why don't you explain to the folks what that's all about? Well, it's pretty simple, really. If during a skid the vehicle is diverted from its intended line of travel, the driver must bring the rig back in line through counter-steering, or steering in the direction he wants to go. The key is to always keep the tractor out in front of the trailer, with those front wheels ahead of the drive axle. Sounds pretty simple. Rolling traction and counter steering seem to be the keys to look for in judging good skid control. But what about the skids themselves? What causes a skid in the first place? Well, Van, most people usually think it's related to road conditions, ice or snow. But skids can happen in rain or on good dry roads as well. The best control is really prevention, being aware of traffic and road conditions and avoiding situations that might force you into some sudden action. That's certainly what the drivers out here today will tell you. Avoid situations where you might have to overreact. Definitely, because skids are usually brought on by some type of excessive action by the driver. Most commonly, it's overbraking or overacceleration. In either case, the way to regain rolling traction is to ease up on the action causing the skid. Get off the brake if it's a braking skid or get off the fuel if it's a power skid. But of course, if you're in a braking skid, simply getting off the brake may not give you all the control you need. Stab braking is a technique which every experienced driver is familiar with. In many cases, it's the only way to reduce speed and maintain directional control at the same time. This demonstration shows what's involved in stab braking. Now, the driver brings the wheels to the point of lockup and then releases them so that they roll again. The timing is very critical in this maneuver. If the wheels don't regain rolling traction between applications of the brake, the rig will just continue to skid out of control. The two drivers are still getting ready for today's event, so let's take this opportunity to look at some of the action from earlier in the week. This event was the all-wheel braking skid, the most common type of skid, where all of the wheels lose rolling traction and begin to slide. The driver must safely come to a stop without hitting the cones which are blocking his lane on the skid pan. It's a difficult event because with those front wheels locked up and in sliding traction, the driver will have lost the ability to steer no matter which way he turns the wheel. 
he has to regain rolling traction immediately and then either steer clear of the cones or else use the stab braking technique to come to a stop before he hits them. There's the lockup. The front wheels are sliding and he's trying to steer clear. He's going right into those cones. He was trying to steer clear, Van. You could see it. But with those front wheels skidding like that, he had no directional control. Now, if he had released the brakes to regain rolling traction, he would have been able to steer his way clear. I think we have another replay of that same event that shows somewhat better form. That we do, Miles. This was Ralph Richards demonstrating the fine stab braking technique, which has enabled him to qualify for the final round today. We'll be watching him live a little later on, but let's look at this action from earlier in the week right now. Keep in mind that he's entering the skid pan at about 30 miles an hour. And be sure to watch those wheels when he starts to stab the brakes. All right, the wheels are locked, but look how quickly he regains rolling traction and starts to stab braking. Locking and releasing all the way. Really nice form. The next event we'll look at is the rear wheel braking skid with a bobtail tractor. The drivers were being judged here on how well they could control a skid when the drive axle is locked up by excessive braking. In this skid, the key to maintaining control is effective counter steering. Now, this was a run with George Jackknife Jackson at the wheel. It wasn't a very good day for George, as we'll see here. Let's watch the approach. The rear wheels are locked. Well, he sure lost control of that one. Let's take a closer look in slow motion. You can see that George never did get off the brake and regain rolling traction. And with those rear wheels locked and no counter steering, he was out of control from the moment the skid began. Obviously, if he had been running with a trailer, he would have found himself in a jackknife. He certainly went beyond the 15 degree mark. In any skid, the sliding wheels will tend to lead the vehicle. And that's exactly what you saw there. Those rear wheels came completely around to the front, and he didn't have a chance of regaining control. Let's take a look at how it should be done. This was another of our two remaining drivers, Jim Johnson, on his attempt at the rear wheel braking skid. He's in the skid, and the rear wheels are locked. But watch how he counter steers to hold the tractor in line. Even with those rear wheels and sliding traction, the counter steering gives him the control he needs to hold his lane. No doubt about it, Van. It was a fine run. But you know, it's not just braking skids that these drivers have to be able to control. They also have the problem of power skids brought on by excessive acceleration. Right. These are the type of skids that occur most often when starting from a dead stop, climbing a hill, or powering around a curb. The excessive power is so great that it overcomes rolling traction and the drive wheels just spin. We had a demonstration earlier in the week, and I think it's worth looking at. Keep an eye on those drive wheels, and you'll see what happens when they enter sliding traction. See how they slide out to the side, similar to the rear wheel braking skid, but in this case, the cause is excessive power. So the way to regain rolling traction is to get off the gas and allow the tires to roll rather than slide. There are two other types of skids which are especially difficult to control, and most drivers will tell you that the best thing to do is to know how to avoid them altogether. First, let's look at the spin-out. A spin-out, as you'll see here, comes from taking a curve too fast. Often, when a driver realizes he's going too fast for the curve, he hits the brakes to slow down. It's the worst thing he could do. The force of the rig rounding the curve overcomes rolling traction, and the wheels start to slide out to the side. You can see how dangerous this skid could be on an exit ramp. The drivers will tell you that the only control for the spin-out is to avoid it by slowing down before entering the curve. When you come off a road after traveling at high speed, you're going a lot faster than you think. Another type of skid which is difficult to control is hydroplaning. This happens when the road is wet with rain or slush. On dry roads, the tires can hold their bond with the road surface and maintain rolling traction even at high speeds. But when the road is wet, the front wheels of the vehicle will actually ride up on the surface of the water and lose contact with the road. You lose rolling traction, as with any skid, and with it, your directional control is lost. The only way to regain rolling traction and control is to slow down. It 
it looks as though our two drivers are finally suited up and ready for the final round of competition. Now, keep in mind that they could both advance to the national finals if they each qualify in their respective events. Rolling Ralph Richards is up first in the stab-breaking event for minimum distance and control. He's already succeeded in stopping at the longer distances in earlier rounds. Today, he'll attempt to better his previous marks by using stab braking to safely stop his rig in the shortest possible distance. Remember to watch those wheels for lockup and release. There's the first lockup and the release. His timing seems very good. It's going to be close. That run will put him in the finals without question. Gentleman Jim Johnson looks like he's ready now for his attempt at the lane change maneuver. This is a difficult one because it combines some controlled stab braking with very precise steering control. He'll have to avoid the obstacle in his lane and safely steer his rig into the adjoining lane within the distance allowed. This event requires a good deal of skill and experience because the steering maneuver must be executed when the wheels are rolling and yet he'll be locking them up during the stab braking. Jim was having a little problem with this one in practice runs earlier today. Let's see if he can pull it off this time. He looks good as he approaches the cones. He's making his move now to the other lane. He's cleared all the cones and it doesn't look like he'll have any problem with stopping. If he was having troubles earlier in the day, you sure couldn't tell from that run. It looked like near perfect execution from here, Van. He never seemed to be in trouble, and he had it under control all the way. Well, Miles, it's been quite a week. The kind of controlled driving we've seen here, the counter-steering, the stab braking, the mastery of rolling traction indicates that the competition at next month's finals should be something to see. I'm looking forward to it, Van. It should be a great event. Well, we're just about out of time. Ralph Richards and Jim Johnson will both be advancing to the national finals next month, and we'll be there to bring you all the action as they test their skill against the top drivers in the country. That's all the action today from Hopkinton. For Miles Trailer and the entire crew, this is Van Rose. Thanks for watching.